Hello and welcome to a special episode of Storyboard. Like a lot of the programming on CNBC TV 18 this week, Storyboard 2 is going inside Bengaluru. And uh, to be different from what we've always done, we are not talking about many brands that Bangalore has given birth to and so on. What we're trying to do is explore what brand Bangalore stands for. So to discuss that, we've got a fantastic panel and I'll introduce you to them one by one. Begin with Ramji Chandran. Now, Ramji has perhaps understood the potential of brand Bangalore before many, many people, before most people. And uh, you started Expo City before that Bangalore this fortnight. And you've lived almost all your life in Bangalore. Then we've got Sridhar. Sridhar is the CEO of Brandcom. And he's been here 35 years. And uh, he knows both brands and Bangalore. That's why Sridhar is here. Priya is unusual. She's an executive search consultant. She does only CXO. Uh, placements, not young, uh, junior ones. But many of the biggest brands you know were born in Diners Business Center when she was working there. So she's got a fair idea. Manish is a joker in the pack in this panel because Manish has been in Bangalore only eight months. But he chose to live in Bangalore and he came here uh, because he heard so much about the city and he knew the city which he's visited. Lucky Butt is another advertising professional and he works now with Robosoft, but he spent a lot of time in Bangalore, 10 years. And he understands branding really, really well. Start with you, Ramji. So what is Brand Bangalore? I'm not sure how, I've been asked this question before. I'm not sure exactly how to express why Bangalore should be a brand other than what it stands for. And that is a destination of choice for many people to come and live here. And that has been the case since actually the days of Tipu Sultan. It's always been a place that has attracted people from all over India to come and stay here. I'm not sure why it is a brand or why it should be a brand other than its diversity. So it's a place where you can come in and be yourself and that's what this brand allows a person to be. It allows them to be themselves and allows them to live and interact in a way that is not subject to any kind of ethnic or parochial uh, pressures as it is. So that is what I believe the core of the brand is and therefore it's attracted people. And of course, uh, there's our weather. Right. Uh, Sridhar, uh, while he questions why Bangalore could be a brand, we have the concept of nation branding and, and so on. So if I had to ask you what, what is Bangalore the brand? How would you answer First, that? I would like to state that Bangalore is clearly a brand. Right. In fact, if you were to look at a city in India which is a brand, I would argue that Bangalore is the brand. But to classify it as a brand is a very interesting proposition because the Bangalore I came to in 80s is very different from the Bangalore which I am presently living in 2015. It's still wonderful. I still argue that's the best city in India to live in. But uh, Bangalore as a brand is open. And I think that's something that Ramji spoke about. It, it welcomes people. Uh, you know, we talk about the U.S. being a melting pot because there's so many diverse people coming in from different parts of the world. The difference in Bangalore, as one of my friends told me very interestingly, is it's like a traditional Indian thali. Everything remains the same it is, but all of it adds to a beautiful whole. And that's really what Bangalore is, in my opinion. Right. So I'll stay with you. Uh, you said it's not the same. Uh, the Bangalore you, of today is not the Bangalore you came to. Yeah. So what are the changes for the positive? And what are the changes for the negative, from I've, a brand perspective? From the brand perspective, it assumed uh, a mantle of being the software capital of India and arguably the <coughs> outsourcing capital of the world. And then I think it's morphed into being the startup capital of India. To my mind, there's so much energy all around you in Bangalore, which I have not seen in other cities in India. Maybe I have not traveled to Bombay and Delhi to the extent that I should. But it's a really happening place from entrepreneurship and technology and I think that's really what keeps the city going and really speaking everything started happening in 91 after Infosys came into the country every other software company came in so that they could raid people here and today because Flipkart is here every other venture capital startup is here because Mintra they, also is here Mintra because is here because they, they can take people money share, so. they can take people uh, it, it's a tremendous source of employment and I think this is only uh, adding and fueling to this success I believe right uh, Priya, 91 is a, is a year he refers to. That's almost exactly the time you joined Diners. No, actually a little bit before oh, that. Correct. But um, truly, I just want to take off a couple of points from Ramji and Sridhar. The point that he mentioned about being a place that you opt, a choice, a choice destination. I think that describes it very well. And the other thing which Sridhar talked about in terms of all coming together. So coming back to your question, which is, you know, when did you really start seeing it happening? The liberalization era was tremendous. The Bangalore that we knew was... Pensioners Paradise, the Garden City. So it was a place being laid back and, and pleasantly exciting, but not in a forceful, energetic kind of way. 
and then post liberalization you have this entire onslaught of new brands new companies coming in and suddenly uh, bombay delhi of course were cities of choice but bangalore became i think primarily because of its talent and because of its i love the word salubrious because you can use the word salubrious when it comes to bangalore salubrious climate great people nice location all all of the above and very safe the brands poured into bangalore and i remember uh, somebody referring to me as the mother of all industry because everyone started off at dbs at some point uh there was there was it was exciting times uh for for two reasons one is because you saw what the potential of the city was and the fact that employment completely boomed uh the power of the possible i think we didn't really see the sadness of how things can pull apart you know when a city grows faster than its uh means or its uh, its structure that came a much later but i think the excitement of being part of that journey is something that stayed with me for a very long time and if you look at humanizing it you know you mentioned that i was struck by your thought the the original i think the messaging or the, the feel of bangalore was a very pleasant grey haired lady you know silver silver hair sari pearls going for canasta to the club enjoying her morning cup of tea the laid back feel was very much that it's like the curious case of benjamin button you know we are aging in reverse so the the feel of the city which is um older and um you know not so plugged into work is now moving into this highly charged very very millennial very high on adrenaline kind of um youth and that's really feeding back into the city so for me bangalore's evolution has been better sweet has been wonderful um you know all of us keep complaining about lots of things but if you ask somebody when are you going back nobody's going back in a hurry so we're all staying here and we're complaining but we're staying here yeah. bangalore owns its weather like you know like crown jewels uh, we talk about it all the time um we take it to heart we take it personally so if there's a drop in temperature if it rains i mean of course we're responsible yeah. <laughs> so i think that's a lot about what bangalore is but bangalore's also what shridhar was talking about so much of excitement and so much of potential and i think if i had to describe it in one word it it's an exciting merito meritopolis that is two words anyway yeah, come to you words, uh, right. manish uh, we, everybody spoke three of them have spoken about the people making choices to come to bangalore and it's a city which embraces those who make those choices you made the choice 8 months ago yep. so what is it about bangalore you were you're in a great job in delhi uh, it's home you've got you know your your sort of support system there you're married just now young kid what made you choose to come here actually i'll start with picking you from what ram ji said i mean i agree i mean you know bangalore takes everybody in its stride and that's why i made the choice to move to bangalore right so bang on on that front but however i mean you know unlike the rest of the panelists i've been 8 months and the way i look at it i mean obviously there are i keep going and drawing comparisons to you know other cities and not by choice but you know it's whether it's delhi whether it's bombay whether it, so i've been born brought up calcutta so that's again you know city of heritage and i keep compare drawing my comparison with that so i personally feel now i mean what 8 months i have seen the city is losing its character you know it almost needs to repossess itself from the charm and you know i mean for me yes the weather is the phenomenal part about it yeah and it still has its magnetic properties but somehow it needs to you know go back to where it was and have an identity of its own in order to you know almost like get bits best of delhi bombay and retain its own character somewhere i think it's losing its identity that's what i think right uh, lucky you know you're on the in between all of them have been here forever actually this guy is just about here 10 years but lots has happened happened in 10 years yeah what are the things about bangalore brand bangalore which you think are good positive developments and what are the negative developments right there? okay uh, first to take off from what others have said uh, if i were to think of one word about bangalore the word that comes to my mind is accommodating Uh, I think it embraces uh, anyone and everybody who, come, who chooses to make the city their own. Uh, but at the same time, that's got a positive side to it and a negative side to it. I feel the positive side is what you know, people welcoming everybody. Okay, for example, I'll give you a small example. In my building, uh, as is wont in most buildings, the security guys are from fresh off the boat from UP or Bihar. Okay, but Mr. Nijalingappa, who lives in our building, will talk to him in Hindi. You know, it's unlikely that. it that will happen in any other city in india make him feel welcome okay but the flip side of it is that there is as much berated adjust mari culture 
you know, which kind of accepts anything and everything that, that is thrown at us, which is a wrong thing to do in, you know, in any city. So whether it's garbage on the streets, I just muddy, whether it is, you know, traffic problem, I just muddy. So this accommodating aspect of Bangalore cuts both ways, a positive side and a negative side. Uh, secondly, to answer your question about what, is, what, I've, what I've liked in the last 10 years, when I came to Bangalore uh, from Sri Lanka, uh, I, we, had, we have a house in Jayanagar, which possibly is the best locality in Bangalore, okay? In India. Uh, in India, <laughs> right. Okay, uh, great neighborhood, quiet neighborhood, the average age was 70 uh, in the neighborhood, all the kids were in the US, a lovely place, okay, and a great place for my daughter to grow up. Uh, and then we had to move to an apartment uh, in JP Nagar, which is again South Bangalore, and I see that the locality that I, that I grew up in, uh, not grew up in, that I, in the last 10 years, uh, has changed so dramatically. Uh, there are multi-storied buildings, there are hotels coming up in neighborhoods, residential neighborhoods, which I think is the bad part about uh, Bangalore. Right. I want to stay in the brand. Now, any city will change. It yeah. has to change. Yeah. Infrastructure will become worse, better, all that. But if I stay with the brand, Sridhar, what are the, what, what are the uh, facets of brand Bangalore which have not changed, despite population increase, jobs and so on. What are those facets which no, haven't I, changed? I think uh, Lucky mentioned about it. I think the complete openness of uh, Bangalore is one thing that has not changed. It was the same in 80, it is the same in 2015, despite, uh, what shall I say, so many invasions, if you will, from all sorts of people with completely diverse backgrounds. But there's been one unique feature about the people who come in from other parts of India, and I think that sort of defines the city. Almost anybody who's moved in here is educated, uh, well-employed, and, uh, you know, fairly um, literate and, what shall I say, well-mannered, which would be very different from, say, what's happening in a city like Mumbai. And that sort of ensures that the city remains, by and large, the Grounded. And, yeah, and most of the problems are, of course, about the infrastructure, the governance, all of which will is not really... In a sense, I do say all of this impacts Brand Bangalore, but I think the openness and the acceptance which uh, everybody spoke about is really what defines Bangalore. Yeah. Ramji, you know, uh, you know, when you go to school, your own school after 30 years or 40 years or whatever, you say, ah, oh, school is not what it was. You know, college is not what it was. It's collapsing. And do you get that sense about Bangalore that this is not the Bangalore you grew up in? And if, if so, what are, the, what are the things that upset you, truly, truly upset you about the Bangalore of today? You know, as a wise man once said, nostalgia is not what it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I, I'll tell you a couple of things that I grew up. I know I've chronicled Bangalore for 26 years running, and I've been looking at it every day, and I've seen it grow, I've seen everything happen, I've seen neighborhoods change. Uh, I, 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 sometime in the 80s, uh, thereabouts, I think, it, but actually it's in the early 90s, and I spoke to my father, he asked me, dad asked me, what, how's Bangalore, what's happening? And I said, oh, it's going pot, it's horrible. In the early 90s, already started to come apart in my eyes. He left me with something that completely changed my mind. He said, that's what your grandfather said in 1960. All right. Right. And that's the way it was. Bangalore is mutable. It keeps changing. Bangalore is always in beta. You know, there's never, Bangalore has never stopped running. If there are problems in Bangalore, and there are, we do have a lot of problems in Bangalore. It doesn't matter how old or resident you are in Bangalore. You face the problems today. They're all to do with the failure of the bureaucracy. The bureaucracy has failed. It's led in itself to also, if, if you're talking about brand Bangalore, if there's one thing that has impacted brand Bangalore, it's the bureaucracy and the absence of any kind of sensible governance. And this is what has been the problem for Bangalore. Zoning laws have been put to pot. 272 lakes in Bangalore have become 14. They've been drained into construction centers. I can go on. There's a yeah. litany of complaint right. that I have. Why do we still continue to live in Bangalore? Why do we still like it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is. It's probably the weather, it's probably inclusiveness. It's probably a sense of freedom for young people also when they come in over here, leave their hometowns, they come to live in Bangalore. The young in their 20s, they have a social life that they cannot unparalleled. It's a sense of independence, a sense of freedom, it's a sense of yourself that Bangalore uh, impacts. Right. I can't say that there's anything that I dislike about Bangalore other than the fact that the bureaucracy has failed us. Right. See that if you were the brand custodian of or Bangalore, if Bangalore belonged to you, the brand belonged to you, what are the five things you would, you would like to see change in Bangalore? No, I would, like for example, if you look at all the big cities, and I've heard some people talk about it, all the big cities have a mayor or a CEO who's actually running the place. The biggest problem is we don't know who runs Bangalore. And that is the biggest challenge. For example, he spoke about 
governance and I'll use the example of Jayanagar which was such a beautifully planned colony which is not what it is today simply because there's no zoning if you look on this road there are something like 60 restaurants I mean it this while you can say it's a watering hole and everything it's creating so much chaos to all the people who live in the neighborhood so I think to my mind Bangalore's biggest problem is the lack of leadership and if I were uh, in charge of the brand I'd first take ownership for the brand, I'd be the champion for the brand and work on some of the funny things. For example, pubs were closed at 10.45. You're a global city. Now, of course, they're trying to sort that out and maybe they have. So these are the sort of small irritants which are hurting the image of Bangalore. And if you look at the past, for example, in the middle of Bangalore, look at the lung space, Carbon Park, Lal Bagh, Bangalore Club, everything. And this was planned, what, two, a race course 200 years ago. And what are you trying to do? You're trying to take away the race course and trying to give away parts of the golf course, all of which leads to what Ramji was talking about, a complete lack of governance. Right. Uh, Priya, today I opened the newspaper, I see a photo there protesting about what's happening. Which is happening very common. In, <laughs> <laughs> uh, protesting about what's happening at Bangalore Club. But tell me, is the citizen of Bangalore getting as involved? You know, we, we do say that the consumer owns the brand. The brand is not owned by somebody else. So is the citizen doing enough? You're doing it. As uh, Ramji says, all, you know, they're in papers all the time. Is the average citizen doing enough? I think uh, compared to any other city in the country, I think we're doing far too much. I don't think it should ever be far too much because we are all a collective, civic-minded people. Uh, but the bureaucracy and the government is failing us so miserably that today the citizen of Bangalore and the voluble citizen of Bangalore is doing much more and much more alone than it than they ought. I agree. So that, if you ask me, is a huge stumbling block. The constant fight to now just remain status quo has become very hard. So we are not looking at getting better in a couple of ways that could improve our brand. It seems very singular to say brand, just our city itself. We're not making at enough attempts to do that. We are looking at a lot of attempts to erode it. And that's frustrating the average Bangalorean. I think Bangalore is one of the cities I'm sure a lot of other cities have the same issue, of very civic-minded citizens. I think most of the people have been outward. Bangalore has got heart. You look at issues that come up, you look at whether it is you know, health-related or whether it's city-related. The way Bangalore comes together is tremendous. It would be fabulous if the government and bureaucracy were to take that step forward and make this march a little easier. Lucky you had something just, to yeah, say. Just that. to add to what uh, she said, in my locality there is a lake which is a namesake lake, Putnahalli Lake, okay? And the people in my building have taken initiative to clean it up, revive it, uh, and so on and so forth. But the apathy of the officials concerned is what is shocking. So I would totally agree with her. It's, you know, we do a lot more than what we ought to and, uh, you know, uh, than what the officials are right. uh, doing. Um, Manish, part of the uh, things you want are part of the things, you know, uh, Sridhar doesn't want, which is, you know, it's, you love this road, you love this place, love coming to Indigo, so you said, because it's one road where you can get 30 pubs and, you know, 40 restaurants and it creates havoc Choice. for those who live there. So, how do you, how do you, deal, what, what do you, how do you react See, to you know, First, Shira? I'll uh, react to the point being made on bureaucracy. I don't think that's unique to Bangalore. I mean, that's everywhere in India. You take a smaller city or you take, you know, Mumbai, Delhi of the world. I think that's one thing which is a common thread binding us all. In fact, I would flip the question and say that, you know, because Bangalore has so many literate population, you know, compared to the rest of the world, India, right? Probably the onus lies on us much more than any other city to challenge bureaucracy because you won't find more engineers, more MBAs, more postgrads, more PhDs in any other city than Bombay, in Bangalore. So, you know, the collective literate mind can take the bureaucracy head on, if at any city, then it's this city, is what I would submit. Right. But that's something that's been happening constantly. If you really look at the City Connect or, for example, there's a BBMP restructuring plan which has been submitted, which has all been at the initiative of um, citizens, citizens who are committed and who want to do a lot on this. So I think it's there, very much there. Janagraha, for example. Janagraha, for example. So a lot of work is happening. Unfortunately, it's uh, uphill. Pace, yeah, it's right. uphill. Mm. The issue is that you things are happening. If we were to do this elsewhere, I think there would be a lot more connect. The issue is everything is uphill. You fight harder to go 
effectively to the same place. You know, you, the three of you have not lived anywhere else. You're talking about there's no Chennai. fight in any other city. Chennai. Yeah. No, there's Mumbai lots of fighting Chennai. in yeah. other cities as well. Yeah. Just to address your Sorry. point over yeah. there, you, you talked about the collective intelligence of the people of Bangalore. Yeah. The bureaucracy is part of that collective intelligence. Yeah. They are not an animal of a different yeah. sort. And they're all people who are educated and they, you know, it's hard to get into the bureaucracy without passing rather difficult yeah. examinations. So it's not that they don't have a mind. And I, I know some of them personally. They do. Uh, I just to give you a small little sure. anecdote again, years ago, one of my columnists was Praxi Fernandez. He used to be the chief secretary yeah. of the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He told me that in 1961, they called an emergency meeting of the Bangalore City Corporation because the city's population had hit one million. And they felt at that time they need to recap it. They can't go any further from there. A few years afterwards, I tried to call the bureaucracy to find out what the uh, population of Bangalore was. Yeah. Nobody could tell me, so I made it up. And I published a number that has been quoted by the UN. I'm ashamed to admit it, but yeah, that's <laughs> what I did. I just did some extrapolation on the back of saying so many people died, so many people moved in. I said it's 5.8 million back in the early 90s. That's got quoted everywhere. And I have a feeling the present population stats of Bangalore is based on... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I fear this. I, fear this. I, I read was... I, I ought to be arrested for this, by the way. I feel, I feel it's, a, it's an extension of what I said earlier about being accommodating. Just the, flip, yeah. the flip side of it, you know, that the whole apathy of, you know, chalta hai, you know, whatever happens, let it happen, is what, you know, is the mindset of bureaucrats, you know. There's a big, uh, whatever, uh, IT setup coming up in the ring road, traffic jam, okay, that's fine. You see, the, the, the point is, I just wanted to point out, you're, you're absolutely right. You see, the point is, when it is within the legal rights of someone to zone a lake into a yeah. development, and there are other, other Bangaloreans benefiting from that development, such as the developers and the builders, many of whom are my close friends. So, despite that fact, how can you as a citizen prevent that person from earning a legitimate sure. profit? Remember, there is a legitimacy to yeah. the zoning problems in Bangalore. There's very little illegal stuff going on. What's hurting us is the legal. It's not the legal. It's yes. illegitimate, yeah. and that's where you see it. So it's just a matter of zoning. Look at the growth of Bangalore. So one thing fuels another. Supply causes demand. Demand causes supply. And here we are, out of control. And that's what it is. Can it be brought under control? Uh, 26 years afterwards, I'm afraid I'm a little pessimistic. Right. But with the impact brand Bangalore and such, no. There's enough of us who can make it happen. Sure. So right. that's what I feel. To sort of round up, I'm going to ask the two outsiders. Your 10 years, your eight months. So. Uh, are you going to live in Bangalore or you, are, do you have second thoughts about living, continuing to live in Bangalore? No, no second thoughts. I mean, cont love the city. I mean, like I said, it's very inclusive. And of course, weather tops it all. It's just cherry on the cake. What about you, Lucky? No second thoughts at all. I can't uh, imagine any other city that my daughter would, uh, would grow up in. Well, I think that's very important. You know, it's yeah. like your father talking about you and you talking about the next generation. But the one thing, I'm going to wind up here. Uh, we're sitting in Indigo Live, which is a place for great music. Music was much better 20 years ago than it is today. <laughs> you agree with that, Ranji? <laughs> well, m the music I listened to stopped happening in the 50s. Right. That was jazz. So right. That's all I listened to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sridhar. Thank you, Priya. Pleasure. Thank you, Manish. And thank you, Thanks. Lucky. And uh, hopefully we come back here and discuss Brand Bangalore in another five, six years. And uh, it's a better Bangalore. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.